forward to this commuter. Hey, everybody. Um, this is our team call on October 21st. Holy moly, what has happened to the month? It is screaming by. I don't know if any of you feel that way, but after yes. two trips, one to Cabo, and then we just got back from Scottsdale for the um, leadership retreat, like, I feel like the whole month has just been one big whoosh. <laughs> and that's how the last part of the year is going to feel. Like, we are going to head, I mean, we're already, like, almost a third done with fourth quarter, y'all. That's bananas. So um, there's so much to share with you, which we will do on a call. Hopefully next week, we're going to get all of the details and all the info and really process through everything that we went um, and learned about in Scottsdale. Uh, but before we get to tonight's call, because we have a very special guest, Marianne Wagner is here to share her story with us. And I really am so grateful for her. Um, it's so funny because Marion reached out to me a couple weeks ago and was like, hey, like, um, I was wondering if you would, you know, be interested in, and usually we do like call swaps. That's how this usually works. And she said, would you be willing to do a call for my team? Um, I really have admired you. And I'm like, are you kidding me? Like, you're up here to me. Like, I admire you. You are such a rock star. So anyway, we just um, kind of had a girl crush moment. And I'm really grateful that she is taking time out of her busy day and from her family to talk to you guys tonight. Before we get into that, we always take a moment to celebrate other members on our team. So does anyone have something that they would like to celebrate that they've observed from a fellow teammate? And I will sit here all night until at least three of you say something nice about someone else on our team. So. Oh, Tanya's like, she'll start. Okay. I'll start. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so I don't think she's on here yet. She's probably on her way home. But my sister got her cast off after six weeks. She broke her hand. So she does MMA fighting. She's total badass, like with the real stuff. But she blocked with an open palm instead of a closed one and broke her hand. So she was six weeks and she started the work <gasps> today. Holy moly, like, that's She crazy. can't lift very heavy because she still can't make a fist. If she can't make a fist by the end of the month, <laughs> I think she's headed for surgery, but we'll, we'll say some prayers that that doesn't happen, but, um, she loves it. That's like, so insane. But that's, that's like total, like that is beyond commitment. I think as far as I'm concerned, because I think I would be milking it for a little bit. Like, I don't know <laughs> that I would jump right into the work after getting a cast off. So I think that mindset is amazing I, I really yeah i love it that so, is amazing she's awesome she's always been awesome <laughs> yes i love it let's pray she doesn't re-injure herself yes me too anyone else have something positive to celebrate about a member on our team someone who has encouraged you yes delise you're muted <laughs> <laughs> y'all know i don't like being muted all right um, so I'm going to lift up a couple of ladies that I saw. One was a young girl and I'm sorry, I don't remember her name that shared her story about um, depression after losing one of her friends. That was Katie. And, okay. And Katie, is she on the call? And so, um, I think that speaks volumes to just the fact that so many people are, ex are, are experiencing this depression and anxiety and all of these losses and how it can really start to just mm, bear down on our lives. And so today was one of those days kind of in my own life. And so I had to really dig deep to go, you know, to even work today. And, um, and then the second person is um, Jessica Oliver, which brought on a new coach this week. And um, the fact is that, yes, I helped to kind of walk her through that. But the fact is that Jessica has got a brand new baby. And sorry, I got new glasses, all new to me. Like this whole hat, how do y'all do this? And um, she's got a new baby and I know she's going through that whole like phase of baby back to work. And you guys, it's hard. Like I got three kids and I don't care if they're 21 going to college or if they're two and you gotta go back to work, it's hard. So I just wanna lift them up because she's fighting through it. And um, I'm hoping that she's gonna lean into the group and you guys and that we're gonna lift her up because I just, um, I just know it's hard. And so I'm excited for her and her new little baby, but y'all, it's hard being a mama. So just lift her up. That's awesome. Yes, we all will. And that's amazing that she brought in a new coach like so soon after having a baby. So congratulations. Um, anyone else have something 
that they want to just shout out? No, but y'all need to get your faces on because I don't, I don't know who y'all are. I want to see your faces. Like there's a ton of Andrea's and Heather's and Elizabeth's. <laughs> No, but, yeah, if y'all can put on your video, that's always very helpful so we don't feel like we're talking to like a wall. <laughs> and when I showered, not always showered, so it's okay. Yeah. Um, I would like to shout out Andrea. She has been rocking the recruiting uh, piece. I know she's on the call. Um, she's super close to a massive goal. And so I just want to say I see you and I'm super proud of you. Keep running after it. You're doing an amazing job. Um, and I know you're going to crush that goal. So it'll just be a matter of days. I know it will be. Um, okay. Anyone else? Last call. <laughs> Thank you. I know some people are like getting off at work and driving. And so that could be why we don't have video on, but those of you who do have the option of putting on your video. Please, oh, please, oh, please. We love to see your beautiful smiling faces. Um, okay, so let's get to it. I can't wait for you guys to hear Marion's story. So Marion has been um, coaching for about five years. She's in our bigger rock stars team. Isn't Mandy your um, sponsor coach? No, who's your sponsor? Aren't you in Mandy Dorsey's work? No. Well, yeah, I'm like four down from her. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I call that Mandy Dorsey's org, who is uh, awesome. Yeah. So like <laughs> Marion and I are like, I don't even know, cousin coaches. I would call us cousin <laughs> coaches at oh, some funny. level because we all like thread up to Stephanie at some point. So um, we'll just call it cousin co coaches. That sounds better than like sister coaches, which sounds a little bit like sister wise, which is a little cre creepy. So we'll just call it cousin coaches. Um, but she has been coaching for about five years. She is a seven star diamond. She is a success club 10 legend y'all. She is hit. You've hit success club 10 for five years straight. Yeah, actually two months ago was the first time I didn't hit it. But. Holy bananas. That's like crazy. No <laughs> Um, and she is a two-time elite coach. She is amazing, and I am very grateful for her to share her story. So without further ado, thank you for being here, and you want to just take it away? Yeah, sure. Awesome. Thank you for that, <laughs> that um, intro. Um, I'm so excited to be here with you guys. Thank you, Joy, for asking me to uh, share with your team. I am going to get kind of personal with everyone tonight, So, um, but we're in the nest, right? This is kind of how we um, help one another is by sharing what, well, sharing our shared experiences. So number one, yeah, if you can show your face, that's great, because I would love to see y'all, unless you're in the bathroom or something like that, it's all cool. Um, but use the chat too, I love the chat. I think that's one of the best parts about being on a live call is that you can ask questions or if, if I say something that you're like, oh my gosh, that I relate to this, like put something in the chat. So just to start, just for fun, I want you to say what city you're coming from tonight. Uh, we have naked spouses. Oh my God, yes. Troy's my husband. He, in the morning, I'll be on like Zoom calls with people and I'm like, I hear him coming out the door. I'm like, oh my God, <laughs> hide the camera. So I just want to see where you are. Okay, so I'm going to share my screen. I'm a very visual person, so I always um, put together slides. But Joy asked me to like, can you share your story and the hardest thing you've had to overcome or persevere through to be in the game five years later. Um, and I really thought about that and I, I decided it's not just one, one thing. I'm just going to kind of walk you through um, the last five years have been a little bit nutty, but who's, who can't say that, right? I think pretty much everyone can <laughs> like, life happens, right? All right, let me go here. So, I can see, Joy, can you see my screen? Okay. Yep, it looks great. Okay, good. So I just wanted to kind of talk, I'm just gonna go through here, but growing yourself while growing your business. I don't feel like these two things are independent of one another. Um, and look at this, I found a picture of me leaning against a wall. So how to lean in versus lay down during challenging times. Because you better believe anyone that's going to go into business, especially for yourself, you're going to, you're going to run into hurdles. There's going to be things that are going to test you. Um, and I always say, I just feel like the people that could, 
that achieve success in this business are not necessarily the most talented or the most gifted or they have all these social media secrets. No, they're not all that special. They just know how to lean in and keep going um, because there's going to be ups and downs, bottom line. So let's go. <laughs> so I, I just, I want to start off with this. All of us, every single one of you on this call, we can all look back and see things in our lives that should have defeated us, right? Sometimes a setback is simply a setup to move you closer to your destiny. I chose this picture of a sunset um, because sunsets are very special to me. My mom was an artist and her favorite thing to paint were sunsets. And I use it as an analogy in my life um, because one thing that I think has defined who I am, because we all have those little defining things in our life, right? Um, my mom died in a, in a freak accident when I was 15 years old. And I grew up very fast. And so whenever I see sunsets, I, I think of her. But I also feel like as I get older, I really see the gift that she gave me in her death. And I know that might sound, I, actually, I bet a lot of you can relate in some ways to this that there's something to be learned. And what she taught me at a very young age um, was that life is very short and we are not promised tomorrow. We are not promised tomorrow with, our, our loved ones are not promised tomorrow. And I kind of operate with a sense of urgency to experience life and to spread love. And um, I'm not sure if I would have that hardwired in me if it weren't for her. So that's just, how I approach my business and next week I turn 41 and which for me it's like that's three years away from when she when she, how old she was when she died so I just the closer I get to that the more this resonates with me so BC before coaching <laughs> that's this is the first picture I took um and I did this for myself I didn't even do this for coaching I wasn't a coach um, in the traditional sense when I took this picture. So just to kind of give you a background, I was a school psych, I still am a licensed school psychologist, but I don't practice. But I was a school psychologist in Las Vegas. I had just moved there. Um, I don't know if anyone said they're coming from Las Vegas here. I, um, at the time, I, Cooper, my son, is one year old, and I was in a very unhealthy, unsafe type marriage. Um, and I was kind of skinny fat. like. I found it very difficult to figure out how to work out. I was a former college athlete. I've always been active, right? But when you work full time and you have a one-year-old and I tried to do the gym thing and take him to the gym, but he was in daycare gym all day. No, gym, he was in daycare all day while I went to work. And then I didn't want to take him out of daycare and then put him in the gym daycare. I don't know if that makes sense, but that just was something I couldn't bring myself to do. And my husband at the time didn't want to be by himself with him. So <laughs> I'll get started. So I just couldn't figure out how to work out. And so one night I'm talking to my brother on the phone and he's a very busy tax attorney. He, um, he's like one of the top tax attorneys for Amazon. So he sold his, soul, like his whole life. He's been given, given over to Amazon. And he's like telling me how he lost 30 pounds. And I didn't, I'm like, Damien, how'd you do that? He's like, I'm doing this P90X program. After work, I come home at nine o'clock and I eat something and I work out and I go to bed. I'm like, you work out at home? P90 what? Okay, whatever you're doing, if it's working for you, I'm gonna try it. So I could not figure out how to order it. So I think I, I don't even know how I ordered it, but I just ordered it online and found it. And then some chick who I don't even know messaged me on Facebook and said, are you in a challenge group? Because I was commenting about it. And um, I'm like, what's a challenge group? That sounds like fun. So I joined her challenge group and then three days of the challenge group, I'm like, this is amazing. This is like the most positive community I've ever been around and I really needed that in my life. So I signed up to become a coach. I didn't even know what, a, I didn't know it was a business. I, did, I just wanted to host my own challenge groups. So um, came into, that's what happened, right? And there's a little Cooper. So um, my, I just followed my intuition. I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't know it was network marketing. I, heck, I didn't even know what network marketing was. And I think if I would have done research, like most adults, 
would do, they might, I might have talked myself out of it, you know, if I would have dug too deep because it would have intimidated me. So I'm so glad that I didn't because I, like maybe many of you, I um, started doing personal development and my whole life changed. Um, and here I, I, I'm a psychologist. Like I should know this stuff. I think for so long, I mean, I have all the grad school loans that should tell me that I should know all these mindset things, but personal development, listening to Tony Robbins while I work out is it's different, right? Any other Tony Robbins people, fans in here? I love him. So um, my whole life changed. So one thing about the business that I realized early on that I really want to highlight with you is just everything you need to be successful is already within you. Like this was my, this was my office. I didn't have a fancy office. I still don't have a fancy office. We live in a loft downtown right now. I work on my couch. I work on the kitchen table or I go to Starbucks and I, it doesn't matter where you are. You can work your business. I had a commute at our commute when I was in Las Vegas to go to daycare and stuff. So full-time job, long commute. I'm like, Hey, I'm voice messaging people on my commute. I am um, staying up super late. I'm not going to mess around and say like, I didn't stay up late and get up early. I sacrificed a lot of sleep early on, but it was because I wanted it badly. Like I, it wasn't even hard. It wasn't even a choice for me. I feel like early on, I'm just like, I had this vision of, I'm going to build this team of women and we're going to Go, go on retreats and drink wine together and tell inappropriate jokes on team calls. And just like, this is, this is, and that's what I have now. <laughs> and so I figure, and also, so you're asking me about my upline, do I, I didn't, my upline is active in business. Um, and it was, I, I had to build both legs from zero, which I think like maybe was a good thing looking back. I mean, I, I would take a strong leg if someone wanted to give it to me, but I just feel like it's something that I now can share with my downline to be like, every, every coach that's added below you is a gift. Like if they're free, you know? Anyway, my whole point here is that you don't need anything extra that's already within you on, if you want to create it, get after something, there's, it, you can. And that's a kind of scary thing for some people to um, realize, right? Because it means responsibility. Okay. So after, after coaching. <laughs> so um, Cooper turned two years old and thank you to personal development. I, I became a single mom and Cooper and I moved from Las Vegas to Portland um, to start a, start a new life together. Um, and this was a very, it was a good time in my life, but it was also an incredibly challenging time. I don't know if anyone here has gone through a divorce and, or been a single mom, but okay, <laughs> Michelle. It's, it's um, even if you're happy to, to be independent, it's, and thank, thank God I could be home with Cooper. I didn't have to, you know, I could be home, but he goes to bed or, um, I have to be awake when he's on two years old. They don't care if you have to work your business. They don't care if you're sick. They just mama, hold me, hold me, Ma, you know? So we moved to Portland and those first two months in Portland, we slept on an air mattress in my friend's basement. Um, and I would go to bed with Cooper and I'd wake up with him. So I would have to figure out how to work my business in the pockets, but Honestly, it was a time of my life where my coaching actually kind of, it helped me. And I'll talk a little bit later here about how I just adjusted so that I didn't come across as inauthentic. Because let's be honest, coaching, we're always pouring into other people, right? We're trying to be the motivators, uplifters, positive. And then when something happens, that's really hard don't try to force being positive poly when you're still wiping away tears that's that's actually going to do damage to your heart and make you want to quit 
I firmly believe that it's okay to share and have a positive message with, with what you're posting, but to be honest with people and be real and authentic. I think social media is lacking authentic people. Everyone's trying to come across as perfect and they got their shiz together. And I don't trust anyone that says that everything's always rainbows and unicorns. So I was very, during that time, I, um, this is us in Oregon. I, I was very, I wasn't a downer, but I was just very honest with people and talking about how my workouts, I needed to show up for my workouts because I needed something consistent. Um, I believe in that mind-body connection, so I have to process these emotions with my workouts, and I'm asking other people if they have, have ever done the same thing. Um, I'm leaning in with my team. My team that's coming up here. Uh, your community, your extended team family, they're full of women. Like I can already tell from this, this team. They're full of women who um, – they want to help you. They want to lift you up when you're down and vice, like, they know that you'll be there for them. Um, so it was, it was, I would say this was probably the hardest period of my coaching career when just moving States, being the single mom, I had no help with Cooper, no family, um, help. So I'd hire babysitters to, so I could work during the day. Um, I eventually got our own place, <laughs> got off the air mattress <laughs> And I had to get a car, I had to get a new license, like all those things that come. But I was also figuring out how strong I really am, you know? Um, and that's, that in itself is a gift. And it also allowed me to relate to other women who were single moms or other, have gone through divorces. There's a lot of women that are like, oh, I now have something more in common with you. And that's human. That's, that's fiber of connection. So I just truly believe you must approach your business a little differently when you're in a challenging season. I, I kind of gag when I hear um, people be like, I show up to social media every single day and I've never missed a day. And I'm like, that's okay. Sorry. I want to attract women that see that, Hey, guess what? When Marion is with her family on a, on a, afternoon vacation or something like that she doesn't have to post she's not living on her phone or she's not always positive that's nauseating I'm, I am positive but I just feel like you lean in a little differently right when things are things are hard and so this is a photo I took um, this is on the banks of the Willamette River in Portland I lived downtown Portland with Cooper and he fell asleep and it was like literally you guys the one he stopped taking naps before he was two years old it's just good. So it was one moment where I just stopped pushing him in the stroller. I sat down on this bench and I just, it was very emotional because it's the first time I had actually really been alone with my thoughts and to think this is where I am now. I'm in Portland. I'm a single mom at 36 years old. Um, I feel alone, but I think I feel like God brought coaching to my world and I have a team. I have a lot to be grateful for. Even though we go through these storms, there's so much also around us that, that is there to be grateful for. And then we know that we're going we're gonna to come back stronger than ever because we're not in any season forever. It's just a passing. So here's, oh, here they are. <laughs> this is um, just my team and this is, they were just the greatest gift. I mean, they would send cards and they would um, send messages just to check in. And like, I feel like you get back what you give. And so if you are authentic and real with people, you're going to get authentic, real women to join, join your team. So, and then, so this is, this is like a hell of a happy thing. thing. Um, um, my husband now, but he, uh, he and I actually met nine years, uh, nine, 10 years ago in a workout group. <laughs> Not funny. I used to do group, group workout classes. And um, yeah, so I knew him a long time ago and he even, he like held Cooper when he was a brand new baby, all this stuff. So we were friends, but then once I became, you know, single and whatnot, he, he lived in Denver and we, 
started started dating. So I again I had to wait, I had to wait for him, right? I had to go through the bad in order to appreciate and be the partner that would be a good appreciate the wonderful man that he is. So Cooper and I are packing up again. <laughs> and we move from Portland to Denver. Look at Cooper fake smile there. <laughs> I'm just joking. So um it's yeah, we've moved six times in the five years I've been a coach. Uh, three states. I am a professional mover. I feel like Home Depot should sell like, they should have like a bar, like a wine fridge or something next to the boxes and <laughs> they make a lot of money off of me. I move me and you know what? Some people have messaged me on Instagram and whatnot and been like, you need to provide stability for your, your child. And I'm, first off, that's another thing my mom gave me when she, um, when she died early is I don't care what other people's like, opinions are. I don't, I've never had a problem with social media just sharing because I, I just don't care what Brenda has to say about how I parent. <laughs> so, and I also say Cooper is like the most resilient, happy little boy. Um, and plus military families move all the time. So this is nothing compared to what they go through. <laughs> so, right? I don't know. I guess I'm women in the military that um, in my groups, so I'm just like, bless you. I want to, you deserve extra wine. Okay. Um, and you know, this is just another thing. I, it's my story. Uh, it was almost exactly one year ago that my dad unexpectedly died. Um, and that was out of the blue. And I don't know if anyone here has lost their, lost both parents, but it's just a, it's just a different feeling, I guess. I don't really know if I yet have the words to describe it. I, but that's something I'm still going through. I'm still processing and you know figuring that out. But I just wanted to share how I share how I did my how I went through with my dad dying. Um, I had just dropped Cooper off at school, right? Um, and I walked back out to my car and I, I pick up my phone because I'm getting ready to maybe send a. I don't know, do an Instagram story, whatever. And there was a text message on my phone from my uncle saying, I remember just looking at it. It's like the kind of message you don't think you're gonna see on your phone. And he just said, the paramedics are with your dad. He had a massive heart attack. It doesn't look good. And I'm like, what? What? And I tried calling him, he doesn't answer. I text, you know, and I'm bawling. I'm like, what, this is just weird. And I, texted my husband and then I did something what maybe people might think is weird but I went on my Instagram stories my Instagram stories is where I do most of my connecting versus the timeline I, that's just how I work I went to my Instagram stories and um, I just asked people to just like I just saw this text message could you please pray for my dad and it, it felt natural it felt good I mean, everyone started sending messages and like I have a couple thousand people watch my stories every day and they're all just like all these people saying messages and I just felt a community there um and then I had to drive to we had, were we were going through IVF at the time and I go to drive to an appointment for that and I'm sitting there and then I get the text message that he died and I just I just share that with you because that community, they're not my coaches, they're just my, these other women and throughout the US and Canada and now the UK, um, that really I connect with them and you can lean on them sometimes too when you're going through hard times. You can ask them, have you experienced this? What did you do? How did you, how did you, how did you get through this? I don't know. But you can lean on them a little bit. Be freaking human, be vulnerable. And, that builds credibility and it builds that trust. Um, and so obviously, yeah, the next couple of days, I wasn't on social media, like, never miss a Monday, rise and shine. I mean, that's not me anyway, but you know what I mean? Like, it's okay to be yourself and just people, people like that, right? I like that. So, um, and then so over the past two years, we've undergone infertility treatments. Um, and I just decided to share that with 
with people because I'm personally inspired by women who um, share their, their stories. And again, I feel like social media is about connecting. I should say that I, my entire team, except for one coach, is all cold market. Um, my one coach, <laughs> I have a star diamond that was my backyard neighbor in Las Vegas that I, she signed up with me. She had no choice. <laughs> but other than that, everyone is just um, cold market. And that's because I just feel like it's about connecting. And when you act interested and engage with them, they want to do the same with you. And that's, it's a beautiful thing, I think. So, um, and this is, this is where I, I don't want to cry, but so we, um, we went through IVF um, earlier this year and we were lucky to get pregnant and, um, and then we lost her at nine weeks. And that was, so that was three months ago. And that was, that was really, it still is. Like we're still, you know, processing that kind of thing. But um, that was really hard. My husband is 40, oh boy, 47, 46. <laughs> he's, let's just say 47. <laughs> he's not here. Um, he's 47 and he's waited his whole life to meet his soulmate to have, that's me, to have a baby. And, um, you know, and he has, he's got such a good heart and it, it's, this has been really hard for him. And so we just, again, shared, shared it. And I heard from so many women who have had miscarriages, who have gone through IVF loss and all this stuff. And it's just, it lowers the degree of separation in the world. You know, it's one thing to relate to a celebrity who's like, you know, a Kardashian, I don't know. But I'm just a regular chick. I'm just norm. I'm just like anyone else. Um, and so I find like maybe people can relate more. Um, we have, just so, so you guys aren't like, this is depressing. Why did I get on this call? <laughs> um, we, are, we are starting round two. We're doing another round of IVF. And I went in today. Um, so we're starting that really soon. So again, got to go there's a lesson in here somehow right and there's got to keep the faith and have hope otherwise why try anything I and I should say let me go back here so you can see you don't see the sailboats in the background here this is in Victoria Harbor that we took this picture my dad was a sail um, he had a sailboat and he loved sailing so we sailed there and I love this kind of picture just because it has both the sailboat and the sunset, right? I, I feel like successful coaches, like the ones you see on stage, the ones getting all, going all of the trips and whatnot, like they're not, they're not, I mean, everyone's special, but they're not any more special than you. They're not any more unique than you. They're not, I mean, they're, everyone's different, but that doesn't make them better. They simply don't give up when it's hard. We see waves in this business of people being like, oh my gosh, my whole team is leaving for another network marketing. They freak out and then they quit and they change all this stuff. And I'm like, well, why did you become a coach in the first place? Why? Like, if your heart is to help people, then stay with that. And that's, that's your true north versus like freaking out and, or quitting when something bad happens. There's always going to be bad stuff happening in life, right? There's not a person on this call that hasn't had something that if you told me about it, that would make, that it would make me cry, probably. You just have to adjust your sails. That's it. And I think about this analogy, when the wind's blowing hard and it's whipping and you just feel like you can't take it, just change your sails a little bit, slow down, keep the wind a little bit hitting the sails. <laughs> Sorry, I love analogies. Just a little bit, do your workout, maybe just do your personal development and maybe that's it for a few days and share that with a few people. And then when you come back, talk about it. And just keep going in the direction that you, your life vision is this way. You can adjust and then come back. Just don't, you don't quit. You don't, um, I, when people are like, I'm taking a break from coaching. I'm like, what? That's like saying, I'm taking a break from parenting, Cooper. I'm sorry, this is, this is hard. <laughs> no. Yeah. You, you don't get that option. And 
if you want to build something like a, if your intuition and your drive is like, this is my calling, then, then you, this is how you do it. So a couple of these, and I just made this last slide, like literally five minutes before we jumped on, but here's the, here are your takeaways. <laughs> my takeaways is number one, how bad do you want it? And maybe, and maybe you don't even know your why. I think that's okay. Because sometimes if you would have asked my why when I was a new coach, I don't think I had the perspective to know it. I just knew something needed to change. It started with me here. And I think I can do this. I see all these other women creating businesses. And I'm like, if she can do it, I can do it. If she can do it, I can do it. I don't know what the heck I'm doing. Um, and what's right leg, left leg, emerald? Oh gosh, there's gemstones. What have I gotten myself into? Just <clears throat> how bad do you want it? At the time, I stayed up until like one o'clock, get up at five o'clock. I was crazy, but it was a season. It was not forever. <laughs> um, again, adjust your sales. Don't lower them completely. Just adjust. A little tweak. Okay, a little self-care. Oh. Um. Get authentic and real with your team and your community. And your consistency, passion, and heart is what will set the tone for your own team. And they will see if you show up this way, they will see that they too can coach through the storms. There's going to be storms. I don't have a lot of coaches that quit on, on my team. Um, I don't have the biggest team. You know, I'm not like Daniel and Tony with thousands of people, but we're, we're decent fives and we don't, we don't, a lot of them don't quit. Maybe if they don't want to work the business anymore, they just enjoy being part of the community. And so just, if I, I know a few of you share that you're going through some stuff right now, just, it's okay, I wish I could hug you through the screen, but just know that there's, there's calmer waters ahead and you're going to get through it. And if anything, it's going to make you stronger and a better, a better coach and a better leader. So did I talk too much? I think I'm done. <laughs> Unmute. You are amazing. <laughs> Holy moly, sister. I had no idea all of that. I had no idea all of that. Um, you know, one of the sessions from leadership that made the biggest impact on my heart, and I'm still unpacking it, um, was uh, all about vision. You know, just like where, what, why are you here? That's what, you know, when you said that, I was like, yep, it's a sacred echo. You know, why are you here? What are you doing this for? And where do you want your life to go. And if you're not really clear about that, then you are going to run in circles and you are going to let the storms take you out and you are going to, you know, be easily, um, taken out. But like, if you have a burning in your heart, you know, for something better for your family, a community that you can create, you know, if you really want that for your life, like that pulls you forward out of the ditch. You know what I mean? Like you don't have to stay stuck in a ditch because you have a vision for your life that like gets you out of it eventually. But I love that, um, that idea of like, take a day, <laughs> not a break, you know, like go get some self care for crying out loud, like Manny Petty, get a massage, you know, like just work on yourself or whatever. But like, why would you ever give up on loving people? That's what all, that's what called us here to begin with. Why would you ever, you know, give up loving people. It's like, why would you give up on parenting? It's crazy. I'm going to use that. I've wanted to a few days. I will. <laughs> <laughs> well, there are a lot of years ahead of you. Just call me when you get to middle school. We'll talk. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, I, I mean, it's like how much can one person weather in five years? You know, that's what I kept thinking when I was listening to your stories. Like, how much can one? Uh, I hope you guys don't think I was complaining or anything like no. that. Okay. <laughs> Not at all. What I thought was like, what freaking strength and resilience and determination and authenticity? Like, you know, you don't have to like hide the challenges that you're going through in life. You can share and talk about them. And um, that's what makes you human. So it, it like, we're never going to be in this business and not have stuff happen, you know, never, but you know, 
what makes you a leader is not your ability to reach a goal or a rank or an earn an income. What makes you a leader is your ability to go through something hard, get to the other side and keep going because, oh yeah, being a leader is about reaching back and helping someone else get through their heart. You know? So anyway, does anyone have any questions that they want to ask? Yeah, I'm obviously I'm an open book as you can tell. <laughs> <laughs> um if you guys have questions you can either put them in the group chat or you can just unmute yourself and um and ask but like y'all this is a an opportunity because marion's gone through some serious crap <laughs> in the past <laughs> five years but it hasn't taken her out it's made her that unique person that leader um, and this business is something that you can lean into and it can help you get through those hard times. It's not something that you abandon in the hard times because it's your life raft, you know, it's that thing that's going to keep you moving forward in a new direction. Um, anybody want to ask a question? I guess I'm, I do. Um, I'm a little curious. So on days where, um, because we all have them and we're all gonna have them. On the days where like you, we've had multiple things come at us um, and we have new challengers where it seems like the moment that they are so excited about starting a business or um, coming out of the shoot and you're like, yes. Um, and, I, and I've learned not to say, okay, this person's gonna be my next you know, diamond or whatever. Um, but I feel like, uh, I am struggling with the counseling part, if you will, so that when people get to that mindset shift of, oh, I can't, I'm going to keep waiting. I'm going to keep waiting. And before you know it, you know, you're not just, you're not talking with them anymore. Um, so today it's kind of been one of those days. How do you keep yourself other than going into manicure and pedicure? I mean, you have to deal with the realness that people are uh, backing up or sliding away or just not getting it. And I feel like I'm working on my mindset, but how can you, how are you best relaying that message to a, say a new person that hasn't quite gotten to the self-development part of what this business is? How are you helping them to kind of go, you know, you're going to make it through this, hang with us and get started. <laughs> you know, how, how would you, how would you approach that? So I think you're talking about someone that's already a coach or someone that was thinking about becoming a coach. And uh, Really both. I mean, I think I had five things happen today. So one was brand new out of the shoot, you know, they had lots of things happen. And then one was a customer that uh, now wants to coach that now is in that spot. So, well, so I'm sure, um, enjoy, tell me what you think, but I was from, for coaches on my team at any, any stage I have star diamonds who are just like, I don't know if they just hit roadblocks, mental blocks, and they stop inviting and whatnot. I just say, stop, don't do anything else. Just do your personal development. And I recommend, I don't know if any of you here have heard of the Jim Fortin podcast. Mm -hmm. um, I highly recommend that one starting with the episode one, cause it's all goes chronological, but it's, it's, I think a game changer. Um, Is it Jim Fortin, F-O-R-T-O-N? F-O-R-T-I-N. Yeah. Jim Fortin. And, um, it's just a different type of mindset psychology, but it's, it's all about, you can't just do the, most people think that if they do the things, then they'll have the results and then they'll be that 10 star diamond coach. It's all about doing the things. But that's not true. Mm -hmm. You have to be this 10 star diamond coach in your mind. You always have to be that, that energy, that vibration, and then do the things and you'll have the results. So I don't care if they're coming with to me, it's always a mindset issue. I say, don't even invite, stop what you're doing. Take a, take a day right now. Listen to this episode. Text me when you're done. Let's get on a call. And it's all up here for me. Okay. But, and if you have people that are thinking about coaching and then they don't sign up, um, that's just fear, obviously. So I want to know what they're made. If they fill out a form, I usually have them fill out a form first so I can see what their fears are. Then I go hard in my stories and I tear apart those fears. And then they message me and say, okay, I'm asking. <laughs> okay, no, I'm glad you said that because that's where I'm getting most of my, you know, some of my ideas. And I'm like, oh, is that too, 
is that too close to home, you know? And I think not, because it's not just one person that's saying that, it's multiple people. You know, we all have different fears, but at the base of the day, there's a lot of similar fears. Um, oh, yeah, fear of failure, fear of acceptance, fear. Yeah, there's basic ones that all of them have. Right, okay. Um, okay, thank you. So Andrea asks, what are your top two to three PD books for new coaches? Um, so I I, so obviously I, I have a lot of women that are, that are, are professionals. They work full time. So they'll just do podcasts. So yeah, the Jim Ford podcast is one that I recommend. Um, Tony Robbins, just honestly, I just tell him to pull it up on YouTube and listen to the videos on YouTube if, just to get started because I know that sounds basic, but it's free. And like, they usually do it right away. Instead of like, waiting for the book to come on Amazon and I want them plug it in right away. So that's another thing I do, but in terms of books, I love um, the compound effect, the Darren Hardy. Um, he don't remember others. <laughs> You're like, We're a podcast girl, and that's it. <laughs> I love it. Oh, you know, sorry. No, I love it. That's good. Compound effect is great. Oh, yeah. I'll yeah. think of like five of them right when we got the call. Right I'm sure you will. You'll be like, tell your team these five. Um, yeah, you know, I, I, I feel like this is a personal development uh, program with a compensation plan. Like the more that you can invest in your personal development, your mindset and your beliefs and all that stuff, like the, and that whole thing that you just said, it's not about doing the thing and becoming the person. It's about becoming the person and doing the thing. And then you reach the goal. And that's like, it sounds so cliche. Cause it's like, well, you're still doing the stuff. So doesn't that mean ultimately you do the stuff and become the person? It's like, no, you have to believe it. You have to like, actually like become the leader that you need to become to be a diamond coach, a star diamond coach, a five-star diamond coach. So, um, it's a, it's a mind hack really, because like, I don't know about you, but like when I made the decision to go five star, I had no way. I didn't have anybody to go five star diamond with. I was just like, I'm gonna be a five star diamond. Like that's gonna happen this year. And then you just walk boldly and confidently in becoming that five star leader, right? And then it somehow happens. It's just weird. But you do put that vibration out there. Like people, they know when you're serious and they know when you're confident, right? They know if you're going someplace and if you have a vision and like either they're gonna hook up. Uh, and attach their their train to yours and go in the same direction or they're not so yeah and i think that instagram stories are such a gift i wish i had it early on because people can feel they don't care what you're saying they want to know like you have that energy and that belief and you're like well she believes it oh, okay <laughs> you have to believe enough for them you have to have enough excitement for everyone and that's they just want to feel that they don't care what you're saying yeah, I think the best time to go live is like right when you finish your workout and have all those endorphins <laughs> going in your body and you're just like, ah! um, you know, sweaty mess and all. Like that's, that's the awesome part about what we do. Uh, anyone else have any questions, comments, or anything? I mean, Marion and I can talk all night. <laughs> your time. <laughs> Um, well, it looks like we're wrapping up. So I just want to say thank you for sharing some very personal parts of your story with us. And, um, yeah, I didn't do the ugly cry, which is very shocking because I'm sure my whole team is like, why Joy's not crying yet? Well, I'm <laughs> saving it for when I get off the phone or off the call. And I probably will do a big ugly cry because, um, your story touched me very deeply and I'm very grateful for you. And I'm so thankful that none of that took you out of this community because it would not be the same without you. Oh, thank you. No, I, I can't imagine going through all that without, without this community. So it's, Great. this is a gift. Great. Yeah. Heck no. So, um, all right guys. Well, thank you so much for tuning in tonight and, uh, make it a great week. I'll see you on the team page. I love you all. Make it amazing. Go, show everyone just how much you believe in this business and how like what that vision is that you are creating for your life like go talk about that they don't care about what you're doing they care about where you're going 
Um, so talk about that more. And I think you'll find that people gravitate toward the vision of where you're going more than what you're doing. Does that make sense? So anyway. All right. Love you guys. Thanks, Marion. Thank you. Bye, baby.